Hi, Andrew here. Today we're going to test Hornady's 223 73 grain critical defense FTX from a 16 inch barrel. A little backstory on this is that if you've been following this series, you know that I do the vast majority of my testing through a 10 and a half inch barrel. The reason for that is that well, I have a finite amount of gel, I have a finite amount of time, I have a finite amount of refrigerator space, and that's the main limiting factor here. So that means that each time I go out to the range, I have a limited number of shots that I can do. Now, I could do more different loads to test, or I could test the same load twice and bring you fewer view videos. So I chose to do a different load in each shot as much as possible. Next, I have to choose what barrel length to use. Well, if I shoot a 10 and a half inch barrel, that tells us what a 10 and a half inch barrel does at close range, but it also gives us a hint at what a 16 inch barrel would do at 100 yards. And in a very general sense, loads that do well out of a short barrel also usually do pretty well out of a longer barrel. Conversely, if I used a 16 inch barrel, it would tell us nothing about what a shorter barrel might do. So given those limitations, and given the fact that I've asked ARFCOM a couple of times through polls, which barrel lengths are best to test with, the vast majority of you people, yeah, you people, <laughs> respond that 10 and a half inch is what you want to see. Well, I aim to please. However, why not go back and test a few of these loads from a 16 inch barrel from time to time? And I ask which loads you'd like to see tested. And Hornady 73 grain FTX was the top of the list the last time we ran this poll. Therefore, that's what you're gonna see today. 16 inch barrel, Hornady 73 grain. Let's get out to the range and shoot it into 10% ballistic gelatin. Okay, so this is virtually identical to what we saw from Hornady's own video, where, of course, virtually instant in expansion, lots of disruption in here. The bullet came to rest here well short of the 12-inch mark at... Oh, calling me surprised. It's actually not too short of the 12-inch mark like 11 and 7 eighths. So I suppose what we're going to see is that if you take enough shots that you get a few that are a little under and maybe a few that are at the 12 inch mark. Um, ironically, a little bit better performance than we saw from Hornady's own testing. Still, I wouldn't say that this is ideal for home defense with a 16 inch carbine. Let's take a look at the projectile. There we go. Nice and big for a 224 diameter expanding bullet. Lots of smashiness, so fair amount of fragmentation in here. We'll take a photo and some measurements at home, but that gives you a good idea of what this looks like. Or we will if I can find it. Okay, so the first thing to note here is that my result is a little bit deeper than Hornady's own published result. Hornady saw about 10 inches of penetration. I saw a just under 12 inches of penetration. Granted, both of these are one single shot. I'm inclined to take responsibility for whatever errors were involved. I, I think that Hornady's testing methods are probably more accurate than my own. 
However, it's, it's entirely possible that they made an error. Occam's razor indicates that if there was an error, it's on my side. That said, it's difficult to nail down exactly what caused the discrepancy. It could simply be a matter of the fact that this type of ammunition varies in penetration depth significantly. There could be other things going on. Unfortunately, Hornady did not publish the velocity, retained weight, or expansion figures on this test, so we have to speculate a bit. The only velocity figure that I could find is for a 24-inch barrel. That doesn't help at all. It's difficult to compare apples to apples, but let's say, hypothetically, that my result was actually the accurate one and that this is what this ammunition does most of the time. Is it acceptable or useful for defense? Well, it still came in just barely under that 12-inch minimum. Would we call that passing? Yeah, sure, I guess, but there's a lot of ammunition out there that does much better and nails that 14 to 16-inch sweet spot that we really like to see it in uh, because that gives a little bit more room for error a little bit more margin for error if things don't go quite right. And Hornady makes some ammunition that nails that sweet spot really well, even with barriers and whatnot. Like their GMX and their tap barrier line are absolutely outstanding. They turn in perfect performance. Why would we choose something that's just borderline if the same company even makes much better ammunition? I'm not recommending this for defensive use. I understand why some people want to limit penetration. If that's the case, maybe this is a good choice for you. If this performance was from some new fancy 5.45 millimeter ammunition, I wouldn't hesitate to recommend it because there isn't anything else in that caliber that performs as well as this does. But it isn't. There is a ton of ammunition out there in 5.56 that performs better than this. Does it fail? No, but there's a lot that does better. There's just too much outstanding top of the line 5.56 or 223 Remington defense ammunition out there. Right now at the top of my list is 50 grain TSX, 62 grain trophy bonded bear claw, and 77 grain TMK. One of those is gonna fit your needs very well. If you have any questions or if you think I got something wrong, definitely leave a comment below. I always love to hear your input on these, these sort of things. There's a lot of opinion that I injected into this piece, so let me know what you think about my opinions. You don't have to take them at face value. I am not an expert. If you want to rent a phantom high-speed camera just like the one that I used to create this video, get in touch with AIMED Research. Their contact information is in the description. Have a great day.